Hey guys, welcome back to The Pressing Matters. I'm Scott, thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for your support. Today, uh, we're, well, we're almost at 5,000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed yet, and you like this kind of content, please hit subscribe and notification. Hit the like button. You'll be sure to get notified of any new content that comes up. So in 1958, Liv uh, RCA Living Stereo put out this album. It's called Witch's Brew. It's a collection of spooky classics, and it was done uh, by DECA for RCA. Uh, the engineer on this set is Kenneth Wilkinson of DECA fame. And he brings his ex expertise to this as he does to everything he touches. Um, the selections chosen for this, not all of them I would say are really spooky, but some have spooky titles and some are kind of ominous sounding. Um, on the first side is Arnold's uh, Overture to Tam O'Shanter, which is the first time I ever heard that was on this. And the second is a, an excerpt from Pictures at an Exhibition called Nomus, which is the more foreboding sounding movement. Um, and it finishes off with A Night on Bear Mountain, which I just reviewed, a Power, Power of the Orchestra, which has renditions of both Pictures and Night on Bear Mountain as well. So side two has a really, really beautiful Danse Macabre and also Witch's Ride from Hansel and Gretel and the Mephisto Waltz. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really hard to find super spooky sounding classics and I think they did a pretty good job rounding up the usual suspects. Um, I had never heard Humperdinck's Witch's Ride before and it was, it was interesting. I didn't find it that spooky, but no matter. People like this album because it's rare, because of the cover, and because of the sound. The sound is really the drawing factor. The performances are okay. Some of them have been bettered. Um, just coming off of Power of the Orchestra and hearing that version by Len Rene Leibowitz of Night on Bear Mountain, this one sort of is a little subpar compared to that. Um, Sound-wise too, sound-wise the power of the orchestra is, is much better. But overall, it's a very uh, explosive sounding record. Um, it's got a very low bass and that's kind of what it's famous for. Even um, Acoustic Sounds puts in their advertising blurb, they put, uh, it's a woofer wower, and if you have a full range system or have subwoofers, you'll know what he's talking about. Um, it does reach down into the depths, and that's probably what landed it on the um, TAS Super Disc list because HP or Harry Pearson was partial to um, this kind of sound. And uh, the, the Classic 33. Um, it just, it's got a few problems and, and mainly it's, it's that, it's that top end. Um, I don't know. I think it was done early on transistor equipment and for whatever reason he EQ'd it. So it, it sounds a little sizzly in the top and I don't particularly care for that particular pressing. Um, Bernie did a second try at it on the classic 45 so this comes in a in a box like this and it's clarity vinyl and this is a great improvement on the classic 33 this is how it looks and they're engraved on the back I don't know if you can see that but um, it's a four record one one sided for record set. So, um, a lot of vinyl in here. But I prefer the sound on this one, this one to the classic 33. It sounds much better. 
it sounds a little bit more rounded off and less strident than the classic 33. Um, overall, for 45, I preferred this one. Um, the newest one is a 33. I don't know if they're going to do it at 45. The newest one is mastered again from the original analog tapes. Um, this one is done in Germany where the uh, original tapes now reside. And it is probably the best of all worlds. Um, the 45 is really good, no doubt, but it's, it's like $200 to $400. And honestly, for this kind of set, this kind of music, uh, which I find to be interesting but non-essential because um, the performances have been bettered elsewhere. But uh, for someone that really wants this in their collection, the, the Analog Productions is wonderful. I probably will eventually just live with this one. Um, I don't need to have the 45. I rarely play it and I do like the layout on the 33 better. Um, there are lots of highlights throughout. Um, the Overture to Tam O'Shanter has very like low bass rumblings in several parts. Very ominous sounding and that's probably what landed it on here. Um, very, very deep subterranean bass on that. Um, Gnomus as well from pictures at an exhibition. Um, the Night on Bear Mountain, um, it's, it's got the, it's got the low bass impact and so forth. Just, I didn't really care for the reading as much. What's really, the real standout track on this is Dance Macabre. Really good. Very, very good, um, rendition of it and the sound is wonderful sound is great and i think that's worth the price of admission for this one um it also features witcher's ride Witch's ride from hansel and gretel um it didn't really strike me as particularly spooky but it was okay and mephisto waltz is besides the title i don't see anything very um sinister or spooky about that but um Overall, it's, it's a really nice sonic treat. Um, there's a lot of, um, besides the low bass, there's a lot of beautiful plucked strings and depth uh, that Wilkinson has captured on this recording. And it's, it's, a, it's a sonic treat. Um, I don't know if it's something I'm gonna return to often, but it is kind of fun to have once in a while. And certainly for Halloween, it's a good listen. So um, I can highly recommend the new one. Um, it's kind of a no brainer if you want this record to complete your living stereo collection. Um, is it essential? Yeah, it's essential to have it. I think it's essential to have it. Even though the performances have been bettered elsewhere, it's a real, it's a really unique record. And I think anyone who's into living stereo would like love to have it and that's probably the best way to get it now so that's my take on it uh if you have an original i'd love to hear from you because i've never heard it and i'm very curious what the differences are but uh, until next time i'm scott for the pressing matters happy halloween and we'll see you next time